So, Pokemon Go has been announced for beta testing or field testing, if you will, um, in the US. And honestly, I think it's a good opportunity for people to get their hands on the game. I've seen leaks of the game already, and quite honestly, I'm sleeping on the game, to be honest. And that's just because I am not for this gimmick of what the gameplay is, but I do understand that they're trying to get people to get up walk outside, enjoy the outdoors, socialize with people outside of social media. I think it's a really good, I, I think it's a good idea, but what they're doing with it, I kind of don't like it. Um, but that's just my personal taste. Uh, I'm going to put footage on the side of me just to give you guys uh, an idea of what the game will be like. I'm not sure if I can do that. I might get in trouble for doing it. Who knows? But I kind of slept on the game is pretty much what I'm trying to say. Um, when it first came out, when Pokemon Go was first announced, I was in a state of intriguement. That's not a word. I was in I was in a state of actually wanting to know more about the game. But as soon as I started to see and read information about the game, I just like it, it kind of died down for me, man. I, I just don't I don't know. I know a lot of people on social media and off of social media who are hooked to this game. They want to see the game release they want to get their hands on the game fully they want to see a full release version of the game and this is basically what this beginning part of <laughs> this episode is for beta testing is now open i will leave a link in the description below so that you guys can go and sign up for that um all you need is an android with 4.3 uh, I don't know if it's called an iOS <laughs> or I, I'm not good with Android devices. You just need a 4.3 uh, drive or higher. <laughs> and for people with iPhones, you need iOS 8 or higher. Anything lower than that or anything that isn't an iPhone or an Android, of course, if you don't have those phones, I don't know why you don't, but anything that isn't that, um, the game won't work for it, unfortunately. So if you do get lucky enough to get your hands on beta testing uh, and you want to tell me about it, go ahead and tell me about it. But like I said, I'm kind of sleeping on Pokemon Go, but that's just a bit of information for you guys that were interested in that game. The starters, legendaries, and region of Pokemon Sun and Moon have been announced, and honestly, I am not satisfied. In a way. So Pokemon Sun and Moon have been announced, yes, this is something that we all know, um, but just recently the starters, legendaries, and region for the Pokemon Sun and Moon games have also been announced, and quite honestly, I am not disappointed in the starters. I'm super lit for the legendaries, and I'm super lit for the region, but when it comes to these starters, man, I have to see these final evolutions, because... As of right now, I'm on the fence about the starters in the game. A lot of people like Litten, a lot of people like Rowlet. I don't see that many people liking Poplio. There's like a small community of people that do. Bless you guys, you guys are a special breed because that thing is freaking ugly. <laughs> in my opinion though, in my opinion. But compared to the previous generations, I think that these starter Pokemon are kind of weak sauce. But who knows, they might be a really good team player, I think. That's what I'm going to say. They might be really good to um, additions to your teams if you do Pokemon Wi-Fi competitively. Um, I'm hoping that this game actually does do something with the competitive scene in-game that, you know, makes it different, makes it stand out from the rest of the games, because if this is the same formula um, as previous Pokemon games, if you've ever played the role-playing game, you will know that you start off in a small town, you meet your professor, you get your Pokemon, you start on your journey, you go and get your you go and get all the Pokemon badges from all the gens, and then you take on the Elite Four, and then whatever story is mixed in between that, you just go through that. And I, I mean, this is a Pokemon game. That you shouldn't really expect more or less from the actual story. What caught my eye with the trailer actually was, um, if you paid attention to, I think I'm gonna put more footage on the side of me, if you paid attention to the trailer, you would see that in the battle scene, there are bystanders standing in the back. I think that's a really good touch. They also brought back character customization, which I think is really dope. Um, I played Pokemon X and I've also played Pokemon Y, Pokemon X being my preferred game to play. I had, I think I played that game like two to three times and I've had like so many characters that I created. I think it's a really good way of bringing creativity to a Pokemon game and making it more immersive. But that's just me. A lot of people, a lot of people surprisingly did not like character customization. They didn't care for it, um, just because people don't like sitting through and going through and customizing a character, which is 
which is fine. Um, as far as any other news with Pokemon Sun and Go, I'm gonna keep this under the radar just because I don't want to spoil anything or uh, kill the hype for myself. A lot of people may not agree with that mindset, but it's okay because, you know, not everybody's the same, not everybody wants to see the same things. But yes, I'm gonna keep this under the radar. I just wanted to let you guys know what happened, what what's going on with the Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, news. So yeah. <laughs> On to the next section. Dragon Ball Universe 2 has been announced um, by Bandai Namco, and it's about time, honestly. It really is about fucking time. I've been waiting for this game to drop ever since I finished Dragon Ball Universe 1, which I put, I think, like 80 to 100 hours in that game. Um, I played the shit out of that game. I modded the shit out of the game. It, got, it even got to a point where I fucked up my save modding that game. Don't ask me how I did the shit. I just fucking did it, okay? I'll be the first to say that this game looks like it's going to live up to the expectations that fans have for it. Honestly, it looks really dope based on what you see in a trailer. I know the movie villains are going to be in there, like for example, Lord Slug is in the game, um, Turles is in the game, so that's actually pretty dope. There's a shot actually in, there's a shot actually in the trailer that shows Frieza throwing a death ball with his finger at um, Goku's father, which I think his name is Bardock. His name is Bardock. I don't know why I forgot his name right, right there. I had a brain fart. Um, Frieza's throwing a death ball at Bardock, and the shit looks amazing the way it was rendered out. Like, I'm not sure if that's a pre-rendered, uh, I'm not sure if that's pre-rendered CGI or if that's just supposed to be in the game. But, yeah, it, it actually looks really nice. I have a friend of mine who actually did a video on this, and he pointed that out, and the way it looks, it just looks sharper. It looks smoother. Um, the in-game graphics are the same, the characters look like they're the same, but the hub world does look different, and it's speculated that the character customization is actually more in-depth than it would be in Dragon Ball Z Universe 1, so for the people who actually like to make goofy looking characters or they wanted to recreate different characters, you actually have more reign over that. I'm not sure if that's solid information. Being that it is speculated, it might be. Being that it's a new Xenoverse game, so they might give us a little bit more leeway with the character customization. But as of as of right now, um, the only thing, the only notable things I should say that I'm expecting with Dragon Ball Xenoverse is the fighting mechanics, the graphics, and the online experience. I'm hoping that the online experience is actually very solid. They can maintain servers so that it's people aren't lagging out and coming back in and lagging out and coming back in. It's just, I hope it's not monotonous and tedious. Um, as far as the story goes, it's the same old mumbo jumbo with the Dragon Ball. The storyline is in jeopardy and you have to go back in time or you have to go into future to save the Dragon Ball history to make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. We pretty much already knew this being that Toa and Mira, um, their story arcs weren't completely uh, Completed, completely completed, okay, go. <laughs> Their story arcs weren't completed in the first game. If you played the first game, I'm sorry if you didn't because I just spoiled you. Yes, their story arcs weren't completed, but by this time you should have already played the game if you didn't, sorry. Uh, you need to go do that because Xenoverse 2 is coming out and you need to be ready for that shit just like the rest of us are. So hop on that train, hop on that train. Now, do it now. It's on Steve, the PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, Gamefly, freaking Blockbuster. Blockbuster no longer exists, but it's 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 everywhere. You can go get the game. Go buy the game, go play the game so that you're ready for the Xenoverse 2 is what I'm trying to get. But let me know how you guys feel about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 in the comment section below. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts about it. Um, if you're speculating it, no, if you're not speculating, if you're anticipating it, if you're not anticipating it, let me know in the comment section below. For all you Adult Swim fans out there, Adult Swim Singles 2016 has been announced. Um, it actually started today. Um, for people who don't know what Adult Swim Singles is, for every year, 25 weeks out of the year, um, they release one new track from various artists that they have listed for that week on their uh, on their website. 
and pretty much what it is, is it's a way to get music out there and it's a way to bring more people to the genre of actual music whether it be electronic music hip-hop music rock music what have you um i personally grew up watching um, adult swim and i've also paid attention to a couple of years of the singles i paid attention to to the 2015 and 2013 years of adult singles um why i skipped out on other years don't ask me i don't know i just i just did but there seem to be notable names on here like Flying Lotus, Metro Boomin, uh, DJ PayPal, um, and examples like that. But this year seems to have like a lot of really dope names. I'm gonna put a picture to the side of me and I'm also gonna put a link in the description to the actual post itself so that you guys can take a look at it. Um, I really, I highly recommend that you don't sleep on this because if you really wanna get into the music genre, you don't really listen to music like that and you really want to venture out and listen to different stuff, I highly recommend paying attention to the Adult Swim single series and getting invested in more music and allowing yourself to immerse yourself within music. So uh, yeah, I'm going to leave a link in the description. So it started today. Don't forget that. So get on that. Bukaku! No, it has nothing to do with what you think it has to do with. Trust me, it's, it's not the same thing. Why they chose the name Bukaku, I don't know, but uh, it is a browser-based MMORPG game um, under the developers of REZ Studio. This game is actually really dope. When I came across this, uh, when I came across the trailer, I was actually on a gaming news website and I actually, I saw this game and my first reaction was, what the fuck is this? But it wasn't from a negative like standpoint of what that uh, phrase is. Like I was actually very interested in seeing what it was about because the origami style and the sharp edges of the actual game look really dope and i was like yo like how are they gonna make this a game because i thought i thought it was just an animation i thought it was just uh like a video somebody did somebody wanted to make a creative artsy video about origami but no this is actually a full-fledged game in development now gameplay has not been like released yet they haven't said anything about gameplay they're still working on it but if you wanted to go ahead and take a look at this game, I'll leave a link in the description and there should be a trailer playing right next to me as well. But the one thing that I really like about this game, what makes it stand out is it's a mixture of what um, most people in the anime community would call kawaii um, or cutesy art and horror mixed together. They, they really put emphasis on the cutie side of the game and the horror aspect of the game and match those two together to create this sort of darker tone to what that game actually is. And I feel like that's what makes it stand out the most, but that's just in my opinion. A lot of people may not like this game, but I feel like if you don't like this game, then Honestly, you're, you're, you're a little bit closed-minded. That's not me being mean, but it's like you, you have to be closed-minded to not like a game like this because this is a very interesting game. How could you not want to see what they would do next? Like, just watch the trailers. Not even the trailer that's playing next to me. Click on the link in the description below. Watch the trailer. Come back to this video. Comment in the comment section below and tell me how you feel about the game. And be honest about it. Be honest about that. Just tell me how you feel about it. Now, as far as story, nothing has been revealed yet as far as gameplay, too. Um, but I am very interested in this game. This is one of my highly anticipated games. I believe it's supposed to be coming out this year, if not next year. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep tabs on this game and I'm going to be updating you guys on Twitter and on my channel and blog about this game. But yeah, I, I definitely recommend you guys check it out. I definitely recommend you do that. But on to the next one. For any of you RPG fans out there, you should know that this year has some heat coming towards like any RPG game that's coming out, whether it be mobile, on the PS4, on the Xbox One, PC. There's just a lot of dope shit that's coming out. Um, for example, we have Star Ocean. If you haven't seen that game or even know anything about that game, basically Star Ocean, I would say it is a fantasy star online-esque type of game but with the new star ocean new installment of star ocean it's actually based around seamless gameplay there are no loading screens with this game which i find very unique um, not unique but very immersive this game is super immersive it brings in the immersion of actually being in an online game <laughs> and uh playing through bosses and playing through uh different fighting scenes Whereas if you're walking through a forest 
and you see an enemy, you can actually walk up to that enemy and attack that enemy. There is no sort of like transition going into, there's no sort of loading transition going into the battle. It's just right there. And what makes this game so unique is the fact that you can enter a battle so seamlessly and you can also switch through the characters in your party even more seamlessly than that. Um, say for example you're fighting with a sword user and somebody on your team is a mage. You can switch from the sword user to the mage and use a combo from the mage instead of like the shield. Go to the next character which may be like an archer. Use an ar use a <laughs> archer move with that and it, it just builds a combo and I think that's really that's a really dope concept. I'm hoping that uh, this game plays at really good frames on the PS4 because it's coming out on the PS4. Um, that game is set to release, let me see what I have it marked down at. The game is set to release on June 28th. So if you have a PS4, I highly recommend you check this game out. Star Ocean, Integrity, Faithlessness is the game. Um, I think that's about it, that's all I wanted to cover with that game. I'm looking at my notes right now, I don't see anything else, but yeah. Basically, that's what that game is about. See, just remember, seamless gameplay, seamless fighting scenes, no loading screens, beautiful, 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 beautiful uh, Fantasy Star-esque type of game, and that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Next up is Persona 5. Now, I haven't paid much attention to the Persona series growing up. I have not watched the anime, nor read the manga, nor played any of the games that were previous on PlayStation systems i think they were on playstation systems before but I, I just haven't played the game but looking at the new persona 5 trailer this shit looks flames like it looks really good there are characters that have already been announced um there's a collector's edition that's been announced the game is set to release in japan i'm not sure about the u.s release but i know it's coming over here uh, anybody who wants to order the collector's edition they can do that from the u.s and have it come from japan imported they did announce that um but I want to play this game I'm heavily, 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 and highly anticipating Persona 5 just because it. I feel like it's a really good way for me to get into the game. I'm not sure if this fifth installment of Persona is uh, a segue into the series from another Persona game or if it's just a standalone game you didn't need to play any of the other games to follow along with what's going on in Persona 5. At least I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, Persona doesn't seem like a hard story to follow. Like I said, I don't know much about the Persona series, so if there are any Persona fans out there who want to bring me up to speed and learn me the lore of Persona, you can go ahead and do that in the comment section below as well. Damn, I got you guys commenting a lot in the comment section about stuff. I really need to get on the ball when it comes to a lot of stuff because I am sleep on life right now. Following up after Persona 5, uh, we have a game called I Am Setsuna. Um, for anybody who's ever played Chrono Trigger, this is pretty much like not a reiteration of the game, but this is like a nostalgia trip for the people who have played Chrono Trigger. Um, I don't think there's a game that followed up after Chrono Trigger because I haven't really played the Chrono Trigger series. How many times? How many times are I gonna say Chrono Trigger in that sentence? But I am really in love with not only the art style of I Am Setsuna, but I am in, I am extremely in love with the storyline of I Am Setsuna. It's pretty much set as you play as, I, as Setsuna, she's the protagonist, and she goes on a journey to sacrifice herself to save her village. And it's to stop monsters from attacking her village and terrorizing the people. And it's, it's supposed to be heavily about sacrifice and it's supposed to have like this melancholy feel to it. It's not a completely depressing game, but I feel like that's what makes it stand out the most is the fact that it does have that dark undertone to it um, that makes you feel like it, it'll bring you into the game more. At least that's how I feel if I were to play this game. Um, it is available for pre-purchase for $39.99 on Steam. I'm not sure about the PS4 because that's another place where the game is releasing. It is set to release on the 19th of July, which is not too far away actually. So anybody who wants to take a look at that game, um, there will be a trailer on the side of me as well as a link in the description below to both the Steam page and the developer YouTuber, YouTuber? The developer YouTube page so that you guys can check out the trailer and see how you guys feel about it if you guys want to play a game like that. But yes, I it, I personally am going to play this game. I might put it on a channel. I might not put it on a channel. It just depends on whether or not I can run the game. But rest assured, I will play this game and I will talk about it on the channel in the future and I also will make a blog post about it. So 
keep posted about that. And to wrap things up for today's video, um, we're gonna end things off with a Mighty Number no. Nine announcement. Yes, the release date for Mighty Number no. Nine has finally been announced. Um, but that's pretty much not why I'm covering this news today. The only reason why I'm covering this, because I really don't care about Mighty Number no. Nine. Let's just be honest here. Nobody really cares about the game. Not anybody that I'm involved with or anybody that might watch this channel. Unless you are interested in Mighty Number no. Nine, then I apologize for slandering your game. But Apparently, the voice announcer in the trailer to this game made a very cringeworthy joke stating that uh, one of the power-ups in the game will make you cry like an anime fan on prom night, whatever the fuck that means. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be funny, if it was supposed to be cringy. I personally didn't think of it as being cringy, I just, I just rolled my eyes at it as I was watching it. Um, but a lot of people, I don't, I don't want to say they're offended by this comment, but they're very weirded out by it because they weren't really expecting it. Which I can understand because it's like, why would you make a joke like that in a game trailer? But then again, it's Mighty Number no. 9. Their developers might have thought, you know, people might get a hoot out of that. So I looked at the trailer. The game actually seems pretty cool. I like the way the, um, the combos are set up. It kind of looks linear though, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, honestly, if the game does come out, I would say wait for the price to drop to get Mighty Number no. 9, but you know, like I said, I'm not really a fan of the series. So yeah. <laughs> and for this last part, I have fan art done by members of the Pokemon's, the Pokemon? I have fan art done by the members of the Sailor Moon Crystal community. They've done a really good job with this art. I picked out, I think, three images uh, for this uh, for this last part. I think this art is really good. I got this from Crunchyroll. It's supposed to be a Fan Art Friday uh, post. All of the art that's shown here is reserved to the artist. All credit goes to them. None of this belongs to me. This is only on the channel to let you guys to shed light on what they've done so far. So yeah, um, that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. And also let me know how you feel about any of the games that I talk about, any of the anime that I talked about in this um, episode. And in further episodes, I will try to speak more in depth about games and about anime. It's just, this is the first week. I'm kind of testing the waters with new things, with new videos on, a boy, on the side of me and stuff like that. So I wanna get you guys immersed in this as much as possible. So. Like I said, comment in the comment section below, leave a, like in, in, leave a like on the video if you actually liked it. If you didn't like it, you can let me know too. Um, hit me up on Twitter because I will be posting there a lot when it comes to games, especially being that E3 is right around the corner. Um, I will be talking about games a lot, I will be putting up gameplay posts and stuff like that, so keep an eye out for that. And don't forget, Adult Swim Singles has started today, so you need to get on that, you need to listen to the music. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.